Hello, and welcome to another segment of The Etiquette Guy. I'm your host, Jay Reamer, and today I have with me Mary Rogers. Hi, Jay. How are you this fine day? Welcome back to the show. Well, thank you very much for having me back. I really enjoy our time that we have together, talking etiquette and lots of other things, yeah. too, as well. I, I, I must tell you that Mar Mary has been a big, uh, I'm a big fan of Mary. She goes up to Fredericton. She has dinner parties, and they discuss what topics to discuss on the Etiquette Guy show for the following week. So I've got a built-in... Uh, endless supply of topics sure and do, today yes. we're going to talk about boardroom etiquette boardroom etiquette and <clears throat> you the and I have both and been on a on a lot of boards over uh, the last half century mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> easy easy <laughs> So what, what have you got for us t for me today? Well, yes, okay. So this should be quite an interesting topic, I suspect, you know. Um, like St. Andrews is really a vibrant center, you know, community, lots of community involvement. And so several people, several of our viewing audience are on boards. So uh, we've got several questions here as it pertains to how we should um, respond at board meetings. Yeah. So let's go to the first one here. Um, I'm on a board where several people arrive late and then the meeting continues on for hours. How can I suggest that meetings start at a given time and then end precisely like on time? Well I think that um, you know it's really up the responsibility for uh, a board meeting is, is, the, is, is, the, is the chairman's responsibility. Okay. So it is up to them Mm -hmm. to make sure that a meeting starts on time and ends on time. Mm -hmm. And if they don't do that, then uh, there's not a whole lot you can do except draw them aside privately mm -hmm. and say, I have a very tight schedule. And there's a difference between um, for-profit boards yes. and not-for-profit mm -hmm. boards. Not-for-profit boards tend to be a little bit more casual in, in general, especially mm -hmm. around here where the organizations tend to be small. Um, For-profit boards uh, are quite different because mm -hmm. usually the board members are paid mm -hmm. and they have a different level of responsibility mm -hmm. and they usually are well-seasoned board members. They respect people's time mm -hmm. and if a board meeting starts at at, um, at two o'clock it should be over by say 3.30 at the latest. Mm -hmm. board mm -hmm. more, unless, it's, unless it's a board retreat, which could be an all-day kind mm -hmm. of an or affair, they're, they're doing or unless the, the meeting planning. is called for noon and you know it's going to be a two-hour meeting. Some, some organizations are complicated enough so mm -hmm. that an hour doesn't work, mm -hmm. but two hours should. Mm -hmm. And more than two hours is not a well-run meeting. So it's up to the chairman. So if you have a problem with your the schedule yourself, mm -hmm. then you should go to the chairman and say, this is the deal. I, I, I really want to uh, be able to leave at before, but not before the meeting ends. Mm -hmm. So can, can the meeting, can you can bring the meeting to an end by 1.30 or whatever, and they'll, they'll say, well, we'll try our best. Mm -hmm. And then if they can't, then you just get up and leave. <clears throat> I mean, there's no that your time is your time, mm -hmm. and unless it, unless it's a paid position, mm -hmm. you um, are not obligated to stay. So okay. I, th I think, and you know, it, it and it points up a really critical e e etiquette mm -hmm. point, and that is respecting other people's time. Time is very valuable, and yes. volunteerism, which is what people who are on not-for-profit boards are doing mm -hmm. um, is to be is to be respected and mm -hmm. um, we we by not respecting it we take it for granted and we don't show gratitude so these things are all intertwined mm -hmm. and I think it's very important for um, boards to be run efficiently yes. you know in St. Andrews for example mm -hmm. we have uh, a pr about 85 not-for-profit boards yes I know with a population of 1,700 people. Mm -hmm. Well, if you do the math, you know, you wind up with a, a lot of people on multiple boards, and their time is valuable. Mm -hmm. I, I, I had to step off of a lot of boards simply because um, I just didn't have time. And it gets in your, in, into the way, in, into uh, uh, your... General life, your lifestyle, the, and your balance. A balanced life. I mean, I think a balanced life is important. You need to have mm -hmm. time for your family, and your personal uh, time. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to have time for work mm. and um, 
you need to have, um, you know, you need to divide your time up. Mm -hmm. And if you, um, if you are being stifled that way, then you need to take a hard look at that. Yes. Because you're not going to be good at, in any arena if you're not good. Um, you've got to be really good at one. Mm -hmm. And then everything spreads. If you're not good at any of them, you're not good at any of them. So I think it's important to keep uh, track of that. Okay. Yeah. So really the chairman, you, you notify the chairman. We'll assume that most of these questions are for not for profit, just gen yeah, because okay. of the community of where yeah. we're living. And uh, so you can go to the chairman and say, yeah, look, I to have to leave at such yeah, and such that's, a time. That's, he's, that's where the buck stops, <clears throat> that's where with him is. or her. Yeah. Okay. I went to a meeting last night, and even though there were 13 of us, one person totally monopolized the entire evening. Come to think of it, she always does. How can the meeting be orchestrated so that it can be all-inclusive? Again, it's the responsibility of the board chair. Yes. I think it's very important. It's, it's a very, um, you know, there's certain pitfalls that people on boards uh, succumb to. Yes. One is getting on the board to begin with. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you don't know what your responsibilities are as on a board, mm -hmm. you should find out before you say yes. I uh, contributed to a book called Before You Say Yes, yes. which was written by a woman named Doreen Pendrax, who is uh, involved with the Professional Writers Association of Canada. Mm -hmm. She's a very well-seasoned, very well-respected author. Mm -hmm. And she called me and asked me for some insights into not-for-profit boards, because I've been on so many. And um, one of the things that I think is important is that people who manage meetings, they stay on topic. You have to stay on topic. and. Uh, one of the ways that you can keep board meetings shorter mm -hmm. rather than longer mm -hmm. is that if there are committee reports, those committee reports, which there are, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, there's a finance committee, there's an acquisitions oh, yes. committee, and there's whatever separate, uh, it might be. Uh, arrangements. Those, th whoever the, the head of that committee is, mm -hmm. should submit a report, their report, to the board before the meeting, and the board should read the report. And so that's called doing your homework. So you do your homework, you come to the meeting, you stay on topic, and it is the job of the chairperson to, to keep it on topic. So uh, if there's someone, and there are naturally people who, who do tend to, to hog time, mm -hmm. and either because they like to hear themselves talk, or because they're nervous and they feel if they don't contribute all the time, they're not pulling their weight. I mean, there are a lot of complicated reasons mm -hmm. why people behave that way. It's mostly, it, it's mostly just to, to massage their ego. Um, which is a reason a lot of people get on boards to begin with, which is a very good reason not to get on a board. How but can you still the waters there, though? Like, how can you tone that particular viewpoint? I mean, lots of times, whatever they're saying, it might you be very to, valuable, you, you know, but if they're constantly, if they are the voice through the whole meeting, I suspect there'd be a bit of a turnoff. People would just tune out. Yeah, because, I mean, yeah. They, they don't always contribute uh, mm. valuable information. They just talk. Mm. And it's the chairman's job to, to, to say we've need, we need to stay on topic. Mm -hmm. You just have to interrupt and say we need to stay on topic. It, it's your ship. You have to sail it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Let's go for another question. Okay. Oh, yes. Speaking of long meetings, after a two-hour meeting, I shut down and can't seem to concentrate after working all day. And I know that uh, others feel the same way. So then how can we bring this up to our president, or it would be the chair, her, the speaker, whoever's conducting the meeting? How can we do that? Wait, like, well, do you think, first of all, two-hour meetings, don't you think they're long? Well, two-hour meetings, they can be, they can seem like eternity, mm -hmm. or they can go by in, the, in a flash of a moment. Uh -huh. It depends on how interesting the, you know, the topic, the topic is. is at hand. But yeah. I, I think that, again, it is the, it's, it's the job of the chairperson to, to, do, uh, to manage the meeting. Now, mm -hmm. anybody knows mm -hmm. that you can't sit around for two hours without fidgeting or mm -hmm. needing to go to the washroom or stretch or whatever. And mm -hmm. if you go to a, an all-day seminar, for instance, or say you went to a board retreat where you were there for the entire weekend to mm -hmm. remake the company, um, you get up every uh, hour or so to stretch, mm -hmm. have a snack, have something to drink, take mm -hmm. a pee, whatever you need to do. You know, I mean, these are just things that in order to keep the brain mm. uh, functioning uh, that you have to do. I mean, there have been a million studies done on all of this s sort of thing. And, mm -hmm. and if you get um, 
uh, if you get uh, bogged down, you just have to get up and stretch and just get up and do it. Okay. Get up and excuse yourself from the room if mm -hmm. you have to. Okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's not like you're, we're not, the board meetings are not inquisitions and it's not going to jail. No. It's a place where important business needs to be conducted. Um, you know, policies need to be made mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and um, the comp companies need to be, or organizations need to be kind of steered. And you have to be, you know, if, you're getting, if your brain is running out of juice, you need to recharge it. Okay, yeah. yes. So it's another it's board, board chair responsibility. Yeah. Okay. The uh, duties of the chair seem to, re they're, like you said, we're ste they're steering the ship. Yeah. And so it's important. Do you think that they should lay out all of this, these guidelines at the beginning of the year, at the beginning of the fiscal year, just to uh, review, uh, you know, the policy or how they want to conduct their meeting? I say the fiscal year because you have, of course, changes in board members, you know, typically. Yeah. At the end of a fiscal year, they've finished their term, new ones come on. So do you think that's a good practice for well, a Well, I chair? think so. I mean, I think that these are the kinds of housekeeping details that should be um, settled long before a board meeting. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you, when you agree to go on a board, you don't just show up. Mm. Uh, there, there's an interview process of some kind. And during that process, it should be made clear what the policy of uh, the board meetings are. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that for some organizations that are fairly flexible and everybody knows everybody, it, you know, these kinds of, of uh, reviews are fairly uh, casual and sometimes they don't happen at all. And that's when you get into these long-winded wastes of time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm not, a, I, I think board meetings should be quick. Mm -hmm. I think they should be succinct. And I don't think that wasting people's time and chatting mm -hmm. is the pl way to go. And I think that um, committees need to do their work outside of the board. You bring your recommendations to the board, they're voted on, and you move on. Yes. Uh, this is not the time to have the meeting, the committee meeting, in the board That's meeting. Right. Mm. So I think that uh, there does have to be some efficiency. And I think that it does need to be run you know, somewhat with an iron, with an iron Almost hand. like a business itself, it, don't It has you think? to be run like yes. a business because you're dealing with a lot of people and a lot of schedules. And you can't be, you have to, it's, it's really being respectful. Sure, okay, let's go on to another question. Is it okay, you somewhat alluded to this, sorry, is it okay to eat at a board meeting that's scheduled at supper time or dinner time? And sometimes, I, like I like to bring a snack, so I think you mentioned about excusing yourself. Some uh, meetings, uh, some uh, board meetings are what you call working lunches or mm -hmm. working dinner meetings where the food is actually there and you eat it and you talk mm -hmm. um, about business during, you know, while you're eating your sandwich or, or um, uh, you know, even dinner, uh, even yeah. it could even be at a restaurant where sure. you, or you know, it could be. I mean, there's all place, kinds yeah. of ways of doing it, but um, I think that uh, you know, people have different um, nutritional requirements. Some people mm. are diabetic, so they mm. have to have a certain amount of food at a certain time every day, and they're on a routine, and that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. And you have to respect that. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, walking into a boardroom with a with a piece of smelly pizza mm -hmm. and chomping on it, you know, at will is not on. No, that's that's just disgusting. But or crunchy think, vegetables, bags of chips. Yeah, you know. no, mm. I don't. I don't think that there's any reason for that. So I would keep that to a minimum. Okay. Unless it's a, a you know a meeting where that's. If there's snacks offered, oh yes, well, you know because I mean if you're going to have a two-hour meeting, for example, you might have a plate of cookies and some cider or whatever, mm, you know, coffee. Mm -hmm. um, that's just that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But to bring in, you know, a bag lunch, yes. uh, and you're the only one doing it, yeah, that's not a good idea. Not good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, what is the best way to deal with different points of view? Conflict is a, not all of us feel the same way about a particular issue. So this really alludes us to a conflict resolution, I suspect. Yeah. Because that's what you, you want a board. You, you never want to be to have a board where everybody agrees because, of course, that's very ineffective. So I think you like discourse because that's when you get lots of points of views. And yeah. uh, 
I think that's what makes it very interesting for it, actually, myself personally. I do too. Uh, I agree with you. Uh -huh. And I, I think that having uh, different points of views, different points of view is important. Uh -huh. um, having different points of view just for the sake of having a different point of view can also be important because you can, you can say, well, you know, from this angle, it really does look ridiculous. But from this angle, it really does. It really could achieve our goal. Mm -hmm. So, you, if you don't, if you don't see the full spectrum mm -hmm. through discussion or the written word or whatever, you don't you don't really appreciate the end decision in the same way uh, as if you just focus on the end decision. So, for example, if you have a strong chairperson who maybe even be um, um, uh, the the guiding light for the organization. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, they can put forward their ideas, and and people can discuss them, and they it, they may even agree with them, or they may tweak them here or there. Mm -hmm. But it's how those ideas are put into practice is that's where the that's where the real um, test to these ideas comes, because uh, the climate of a corporation or an organization in which people work is really the crux of the matter. Mm -hmm. And a toxic environment where there are, say, bullying techniques in play, mm -hmm. um, uh, is it may accomplish the goal, but it may not accomplish it in a very nice way. You may wind up with a lot of, of, um, of uh, damage, mm -hmm. um, you know, sort of broken bones and broken souls along the way. Mm -hmm. um, people, um, well, I mean, uh, it, uh, it was just within the last two weeks that uh, the um, uh, chief uh, financial officer of Zurich Insurance committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And there is some question about the, uh, the business tactics that the chairman of the, um, the, the CEO company, yes. used to the point where he resigned. So, so I think that it was, uh, it's quite messy. And even though people will, will say, oh, well, you know, this is just, he's just a, a hard uh, boss, or, you know, he, he needs to be aggressive. Um, it's not true. Mm. Uh, I think that you can be a very demanding boss, mm -hmm. uh, which is a good thing, mm. but you don't have to be nasty about it. No. You don't, it has to be, it, it, it's all in your approach. So uh, I think that um, uh, so I think that a CEO or a chairman can direct uh, the conversation because that's really their job is mm -hmm. to keep the conversation on track. Mm -hmm. it's, it's being a monitor, but generally the the um, the chairman doesn't have a vote. No, so it's that's up, right. It's yes. up to the rest of the people. And if there's a tie, then the chairman uh, would have a vote. Cast, but otherwise, yes. they don't uh, generally have one. So, mm -hmm. um, I th so. But to get back to your uh, point about uh, different points of views, mm -hmm. I think it's very important to hear, really hear what the other person is saying. Mm -hmm. And you know, listening is a, is a, is an art that can often be oh. missed on, at a board table. Mm -hmm. And I think that you know listening is one of those things where you can either listen with the intention of responding or you can listen with the intention of understanding okay and i think that that's a very important point it and is. Um, i think you must first listen to understand yes and then you can um Respond mm -hmm. intelligently, think, can't you? Yeah. Because you really do have but, to. But you know, there are people who, I mean, there are people who finish other people's sentences. You know, I mean, I I know people who've done it all their lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have to finish my sentences with certain people because they'll do it for me, and that's not that's not appropriate because it shows that they're not listening to understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. They're listening solely to respond, and that is. Um, it has really no place in a, at a, around a board table. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I find really irritating around a board table is when another conversation decides to take on. So the chairman can be discussing one topic, and then uh, 
Susie down mm -hmm. the end there talks to Joe about, uh, oh, well, actually, I think I'd do it this way. And then they start whispering. There's nothing more irritating than a whisper. Yes. And I stop if I'm running the meeting, which I do a lot. Um, I mean, because of the, mm -hmm. uh, I don't yeah. do it if I'm not the chairman. But, <laughs> but when you are the but, chair, um, yes. But I think that it's, it, it, it is. Uh, then I don't, do you make a comment to them? I that, just, like, oh, do you, do I you certainly just stop? Do. Is it just I, the I, silence? I or? stop and look mm -hmm. and give the hairy oh. eyeball. Okay. And yeah, I mean, you know, the, these are the kinds of, of, it's just common courtesy. You mm -hmm. learn this uh, in school mm -hmm. as a child. Mm -hmm. You don't interrupt. You don't carry on another conversation because you're not paying attention. And, and it happens all the time. I mean, it happens with people. I mean, I'm on a committee right now and it's mostly conversations that go, it drives me wild. And um, so I think that, again, the, the chairman or the chairperson has to take control and, um, and, be, uh, and, and run the meeting. They have to run the meeting. What do you think of there being time allotted for everyone's point of view? So if you have a board of, I suppose too, it depends on the size of board, because the meeting could go on forever if you had 20 people and you heard 20 people speak. But um, if you have a smaller board, could the chair say, could we have your opinion, Jay? Could we have your opinion, Mary? Could we have your opinion, Di like get everybody equal time to give well, I their think point that, of you view? Know, it depends a little bit on the topic that's being discussed. Okay. You know, some topics are a little bit more milk toast and some are a little more volatile. Mm -hmm. So if it's really an important uh, thing and everybody obviously has something to say, mm -hmm. then uh, the chairperson would be well within his or her rights to say, we're going to limit discussion to half an hour, and I want everybody to have five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's just like the, like the, what they would do in the government. You know, if, if mm -hmm. they can limit the amount of time you can chat about things. We can't be having filibusters at board meetings because no. it would just you'd go nowhere. Mm. And and that's what winds up happening is a lot of times people get off topic, and the chairman might become so interested in the off-topic <laughs> subject that he forgets that he's, that he's running a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> And that's that is it's, it's very typical of boards where where it's uh, sort of uh, filled with inexperienced people. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's really important for any organization that's serious to get a manual that sh explains how board meetings are run and mm -hmm. what the job description for each person mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And that for in, for uh, and sometimes it's almost it's important to have a meeting just to go over all of that. Mm -hmm. Because it's it's uh, I I know that for instance when I was on the board at the Ross Museum. Yes. You know, that's a small operation mm -hmm. basically. Um, but it is run as though it were IBM. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's absolutely perfectly run. Mm -hmm. There's not any doubt what exactly each person should be doing, what their responsibilities are. And I think that it's very important for all organizations to make sure that they use their board members. I mean, board members aren't there for decoration. Mm -hmm. They're there to do a job. Mm -hmm. So I think that there are um, you know, f there are some organizations where there, where there is no paid director, say, okay. and yeah. say, for instance, here yeah. at this television let's station. Say, yeah, let's use um, a station as an example. We're but, all volunteers, all right. and we all need to do our bit. And uh, but if I, as chairperson, do not explain or have a meeting that's saying, okay, these are the tasks that are that are, are that we need to accomplish. Who is going to take this responsibility? Who's going to take that responsibility? Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, what winds up happening mm -hmm. is is that the onus winds up falling on the person who is the nicest. You know, uh, it winds up being, okay. I'll, no. do, it. I'll yes, do it. I'll, I'll do, do it. it. I'll do it. And then that can become a bit of a rut. And then it becomes almost expected that, oh, well, that person has been doing it for all of this time. We'll mm -hmm. just let them continue. And that is, um, that is the fastest way for a board to disintegrate and for an organization to go out of business. So it's very important uh, in, in that kind of a situation mm -hmm. to make sure that the, the responsibilities are, are evenly divided mm -hmm. and that you bring people on a board who are capable of of accomplishing certain objectives. Mm 
So in other words, yes. it wouldn't be any, there would be no point to having a board that was filled with accountants. You know, Being, it would yeah. be no point in having a board that was filled with people who were great fundraisers. Mm. Although that's usually a tough one. <laughs> you know, you need to have a balance. You need to have somebody that, that can count the beans, that can go and get the beans, yes. and that can put in the time. One of the golden rules of going on a board is, is either, it's, it's sort of the give or get sure. uh, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. you, you need to give or get time, money, and skills. Sure. So if you, if you, and you have to be able to do two out of three of those. Okay. So time, mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. and talent. Okay. So if you have plenty of time that you can give and are willing to give it, fantastic. Mm -hmm. If you don't, but your kid can you know, go out and rake all the leaves in the front lawn, mm -hmm. fine. It doesn't matter who does it. You want to hire somebody to do your task, fine. Okay. And, um, because so, that's part of your talent, too, that, that's or right. what you can contribute. You know, so you know. I think that it's really important to um, have a well-balanced board okay. and that everyone understands what their role is. That's uh, ideal. Mm -hmm. And that there not be any overhanded um, you know, bullying techniques. Mm -hmm. So um, that, uh, I think, th that kind of summarizes how I feel about boards. And um, I think what we'll do, because we've, we've run out of time for this show, oh, okay. but I think that we, we should continue this discussion, though, in another show, because I think that there, because there are so many boards in St. Andrews, oh, and yes. because there are, there's a need for bringing new people on, mm -hmm. you know, they need to, their oh. system needs to be in place. Sure. So yes. thank you for, uh, for bringing these questions today, well, Mary. Thank you, And Jay. Uh, it's always nice to have Mary Rogers on the Etiquette Guy show. And thank you all for watching today. And I look forward to seeing you again on another segment of the Etiquette Guy. And if you have any questions or topics that you'd like to have discussed, be sure to let us know. Thank you.